So next to our India Pakistan, we're coming into turn two, and already we've got interesting things happening. Um, so I rolled out the weather, which is clear. We're in the dry season, so that wasn't a surprise. Then we started on the initiative phase, and I'd talked about initiative, um, and I'd got something slightly wrong. Um, the, the game sets a number of victory points you have to get in a turn to have the initiative. If both players, um, or neither player, manages to get that number of victory points, then uh, a turn is contested. But if one makes it past that victory point um, threshold and the other one does not, then they have the initiative. And what we had last turn was a threshold of 20 VPs, which is what it is each turn. Um, the Pakistan player was up to 22, and the Indian player didn't have any. That means um, Pakistan has the initiative, and they have their marker in the initiative box here. If you've got no marker, you've got contested, and if you flip this over, you can have Indian initiative. So we've got Pakistan with the initiative. What happened next, though, was quite unexpected. The UN resolution die roll happens from game turn two onwards. And um, the UN resolution die roll is a D10 roll, and on a 10 or more, uh, the UN um, demands uh, passes a resolution to demand a ceasefire. Um, the uh, modifiers on that uh, come from um, the international posture matrix, which we rolled to, on at the start of the game to determine. Uh, you know who was getting involved of the super world superpowers and um, the Americans as we found out were intervention level three Russia two, China four the um, Indians chose uh, American support rather than Russian because they were going to get more of it but the Russia role of, of uh, as passive uh, Russian attitude to this conflict gave the die roll a plus one for uh, the UN resolution passing. And um, the die roll was a nine. And so with the plus one from Russia being um, passive, we've ended up with the UN passing a resolution demanding a ceasefire, which will come into effect at the end of this turn. So here's um, what's interesting. Both sides now have a chance to uh, veto that ceasefire. Um, the Pakistan side can veto it because they have China in their corner and China have a veto. And then if China choose not to veto it, then um, India could veto it because um, uh, they have the US in their corner. If you veto the um, uh, UN resolution, it costs you um, five victory points. Your opponent gets five victory points. If you don't veto it, if neither side veto it, then a ceasefire comes into effect at the end of the turn, and then breaching that ceasefire costs you 10 victory points per turn. So if... Um, Yeah, so actually it says um, if uh, if any side um, vetoes a resolution it loses five victory points. So presumably that would be, f would that be five victory points or would that be a minus five this turn? That would be a really interesting question. I can, I can understand you losing five of your overall victory points, but you also lose, start the track towards initiative on minus five or not. Does it affect your um, does it affect your ability to maintain the initiative, or would you? So, for example, if Pakistan vetoed this, I can understand their final victory points going down from twenty seven to twenty two, their current total. But would they also lose five? Would their VPs this turn be set to minus five with regards to um, trying to maintain the initiative for turn three? I don't think that's the case. I think they've just lose five overall victory points. They've not lost the initiative militarily. You know, some um, the Chinese have just vetoed some 
you know, resolution over in Geneva or The Hague or, or, or Brussels or wherever it's, you know, been, been held for Brussels. So, um, yeah, yeah. So it's interesting now that the, um, the, the game's going to end at the end of this turn unless one or other side chooses to veto um, um, yeah so I've got to have a quick think and come up with a rationale for why or why not either side might do that so I'm going to have a quick um, break here and have a think about where this might go Okay, so here's the um, victory point levels um, in the game. Uh, if that's a difference in victory points, so if you've got that many more victory points than your opponent, um, th that tells you your victory level. Currently, the uh, um, Pakistan player has 27 victory points and the Indian player has nil so he's on a substantive victory at the moment um, and he reckons he can probably get the eight required to move him up into the um, decisive Doubt we can get 23 to get up into overwhelming, but it might be viable to get up into a decisive victory this turn, especially considering we've got the initiative. And that means the idea of throwing away five victory points and keeping the game going, where as the Americans come in, it's going to tilt kind of against us in the air war in all likelihood and that's going to make our life harder and harder maybe getting things done now maybe this is the best possible thing that could have happened we get two initiative turns to rack up as many VPs as possible and the US end shuts us down um, so from the Pakistan side they're not going to veto the UN resolution because either either they get uh, to and another initiative turn to try and get some more points and then look at their scale of victory or they force um, the India and allied player the India American player to hand them another five VPs to keep the game going Um, <laughs> which isn't a great um, option. So um, PRC ha and have uh, decided not to veto the UN resolution, and now it's in the hands of the US. The US can veto that UN resolution to keep the game running. Um, in so doing, um, they are giving uh, five points um, to the... Uh, five points to the um, Pakistan player. Now, the other interesting thing here is that um, there's an automatic victory level, which is 35 points, but you can't, um, you have to start rolling for it, and I'm not quite sure how that me mechanic works, but at 35 victory points difference um, f from game turn four onwards, if you've got that, you can start rolling for an automatic victory. Um, and if you, uh, obviously, if the uh, India US player hands out another five points, the difference is up to 32 with an initiative turn for Pakistan. Um, let's see if I can find um, something as specific on. Uh, that that automatic victory roll. Let's see, victory points is in here. Automatic victory. It says that um, each campaign is not right at victory level. Um, rolls once on the automatic victory table. Um, 
Okay. Okay, so you can start rolling on an automatic victory table, which I'd have to try and find. Um, I'm certainly not doing a very good job of this. But I can't find an automatic victory table. Um, you'd assume it was somewhere on the basic chart since it's part of the basic game. So you'd assume it was somewhere on the standard charts here. But we've got Paradox Clearing, Bridge, Bridges, Airfields, Theatre Weapons, Replacement and Reconstitution. We've got air stuff going on that... It doesn't affect us. Um, I am struggling to find the... Um, oh, here it is. Automatic victory. Okay. So the first time you roll, you, you, you have a 1 in 10 chance. If you get to roll a second time, your chances go up to 4 in 10. If you get to roll a fourth time, it goes up to 5 in 10. And if you get to roll more than 6 times, you're on um, a 60% chance of victory. OK, so each time you roll, uh, you've got a little bit more opportunity. So, OK. So India has now got a really unpleasant choice to make. They can hand five VPs over in a really poor situation. Or they can accept that there's just going to be this one last turn and they'll lick their wounds and call it a day. Hmm. Hmm. Let's have a look at what might be coming on for them from America. Let's have a look at the likely re American reinforcements. So here we have um, the reinforcement table. We are playing border war and the intervention level from the states is three. So this turn they just got three supply points. Next turn they get some special forces counters, some more air transport, some cruise missile points, 15 cruise missile points and an air, a US carrier air wing. That would be potent but it won't come in till the end of this turn. Game turn three they're starting to rack up cruise missile points per turn. They can also bring in you can see some an F-35, F-15s, F-16s and a B-2 arriving. Another carrier air wing. Game turn four a lot more perky aircraft. Game turn five a lot more aircraft. So um, that's what they're getting. What's their own reinforcement schedule looking like? And it's looking like game turn two. They're going to get uh, 50 power of brigade, 10 missile points, another MiG and a Jaguar. Game turn three. A mountain division, a couple of artillery brigades and a couple more fighters. Four, they're going to get some, a couple more artillery. Okay, 2nd Corps, 1st Armoured, 22nd Infantry, 14th Armoured, some more Special Forces, and so on. In game turn 5, 1st Corps, game turn 6, 12th Corps. Game turn seven, twenty-first call. Okay, okay, okay. Right, and um, Pakistan are going to get five missile points. Uh, no, they've um, they've got those on game turn one. Uh, did I give them five missile points? No, I didn't. Okay. Um, game turn two, they're going to get 31st Korg and an air mobile point and five more missile points. Game turn three, they're going to get 11th core and some special forces counters. Hmm. Okay. 
I think India is going to have to veto the resolution and um, try and take the the five hit. I'm not sure about that though. I don't know if they should. Uh, they've got to try and play a longer term game though and hope that as their stuff arrives later they can uh, they can get through into these later game turns where they've got more forces turning up. So they're going to veto the UN resolution and we carry on. So end of turn two here in next war, India, Pakistan. Um, during turn two, I did a whole a series of videos, um, little segments on um, the air naval phase being played out, specifically the air superiority combat being played out on the on the grid over there on the separate display um, to illustrate what would go on what was going on there got to the end of filming that and found that I'd missed out all the Chinese planes um, so I had to go back and do it again and in doing it again I then didn't have the kind of mojo to film it all again and do a sort of second hand spiel over the top so maybe I'll do that in turn three although um, things are getting interesting in all kinds of ways. Um, this is going really, really poorly for the um, Indian side. Their their ground forces are kind of split apart. The, the Pakistan army has this sort of area in here well under control and it's dividing a sort of sparse line of defenders along this highway here that sort of runs up here and then has been cut off by Chinese airborne up into this area. A little pocket up here who are going to run out of supply once this depot falls and then going to get munched up soon after. Um, and this sort of road is one last line of defence. Um, and then there's mountain troops around the Kashmir region holding that quite effectively. And then this huge um, incursion by the Pakistan army and then what look like units but are actually just a line of combat outposts along the river line and a ragtag bunch of whatever they've got left down here holding um, uh, holding Bathinda down here uh, so they've got some troops consolidated around there but not many um, and that is it I've got a feeling no, I did spend their replacement points this turn. I wonder what I spent them on. Um, anyway, they've taken so many losses. Um, they're, they're running out of guys. They've got, you know, these are their current losses. Um, they have rebuilt some steps, you know. I think they rebuilt an HQ and, a, and maybe a mechanised... Yeah, no, an infantry division. But they come back in on their reduced side. You have to build again to get them up to full strength. Um, so they're cut into little separate pockets and that's making life very, very hard for them. They're completely losing the air war. And um, they lost uh, last turn. Um, Pakistan had uh, complete air supremacy with a better than five to one ratio. And that moves the AWACS track two in their favour. So it's now two um, in the favour of um, Pakistan and that would mean that every time we were selecting combats Pakistan would choose two and then India would choose one and then they choose two and the other side would choose one and you can see that can go up to four which is pretty scary if you're choosing four combats to the opponent's one you're basically dictating entirely how air combat goes um, which they are. Um, I was kind of here's where I made a, a bit of a mistake I think I said uh, perhaps in the first video that the Chinese Air Force didn't look terribly impressive and the US would sweep the skies well much like the Chinese stealth top of the range stealth units all the American top of the range stealth units are optional rules that you have to pay victory points for and agree the rule with your opponent and I'm not playing with any of those optional rules so the non-stealth American units are good but they're not world-beating they're not just going to decimate anything that comes up against them. 
which the stealth units pretty much would apart from other Chinese stealth units. Um, and the other thing I missed when I said the Chinese Air Force didn't look that impressive was I missed this box up here that said set up level 3 and level 4 intervention we're on level 4 set up in the um, the Chinese ready box for their Air Force two J11Bs, two SU-30s and two J10s six, well four absolutely killer um, uh, air superiority fighters and the SU-30 is a really really nice multi-role aircraft so you can see that instead of what I were thinking they were getting down here, we've done two game turns, so they've picked up um, in game turn one on border war, they picked up a J11, an SU30 and a JH7, and then on game turn two they picked up a J10, an SU30, J7 and two helicopters, but that didn't look earth shattering, good, but not earth shattering, but you add those six planes into the mix from up here and suddenly the Chinese contribution to the Air Force looks like that and they've got two down here in the flown box as well which were aborted after they attempted a bombing run against an HQ and got aborted by um, surface to air missile fire in an amazing set of dice rolls for the uh, Indians one of the few things that went right for them this time um, the HQ was doomed anyway though it lost the combat and was destroyed um, but look at this lot. Anyway, back to the, the, the um, you know, that top line of fighters, five, five um, combat with standoff capability, zero pilots, which is good. Negatives are better, positives are worse. So zero pilots are fine. And then these four sort of multi-role aircraft here with the um, four um, combat standoff capability and also. Uh, this is their combat support capability, and this is, if they want to strike or bomb things, this is their ability, and that means um, that they've got standoff there as well and don't have to take AAA fire, so they only have to take SAM fire if they're detected. Um, so these are pretty good planes. You've got this lot to add um, to the Pakistani Air Force, which now looks like that. And, um, and they're up against that lot at the moment. Here are the American forces that have just started to trickle in on the Indian side. That is a US carrier wing. And you can see, okay, they're nice aircraft, but they're not going to annihilate those. You know, the 411 is on a par with most of the, um, with the J10s slightly better off than the J11s, but they've got better pilots, the minus ones on the pilots. Um, the... F-18Es or Fs, no Fs, these 333, again they're nice multi-role aircraft but they're not earth shattering and that wild weasel can attack the, the um, surface to air missile track very effectively but it needs um, escort to do it and you're not going to win the air superiority war with this lot which is, uh, which is, you know, they've got an SU-30 in here with a 522 rating and essentially a load of chaff, twos and threes. Um, and one of the reasons for that is that lots of their aircraft kept keep getting shunted down to the flown box and that's because they've got so many airfields with destroyed markers on. Um, they keep getting airfields destroyed and captured and when that happens either you or your opponent gets to um, uh, firstly inflict collateral damage and secondly to chuck them down into the flown box. Um, you can see on this track over here um, you can see this marker, air bases captured, destroyed this turn, is up to four. <clears throat> um, and that means that two more planes of the Pakistani player's choice will get shifted out of this India um, ready box into the flown box before the fighting even starts because they can inflict, you know, inability to fly because of all the damaged and captured airfields. Um, so this is going really badly for, for India and they've got to make a brutal choice this turn as to whether to maybe just not contest the skies because they don't want the American planes which will build up just to be um, picked off piecemeal in 
when they're in hugely outnumbered and outgunned fights. Um, they may just have to give up this turn and attempt to fight the air war another way. And, well, let's talk about things that are going for them. Two things, perhaps, are going for them at the moment. The first is, over here, the... Um, uh, the Pakistan uh, Corps over here, the second corps. Uh, this infantry unit attempted a clearing operation in this city and um, and failed it. And um, the reason that was important is because it cost if he succeeded, that would have been two victory points. and the um, Pakistan player was on 18. Had he succeeded, he'd have been up to 20. He'd have had another initiative turn. As it was, his VP stalled out on 18. And it's going to be a contested turn like this turn. So that was one major piece of luck for the uh, Indian side. And the uh, other thing going for them is that American cruise missile marker there. 15 cruise missiles that the Americans have got. Um, cru or cruise missile strikes that the Americans are ready to assist with. Um, and... I imagine that as the Indian player, I'm going to start attempting to decimate every um, every uh, Indian airfield on the on the map, in the hope of putting down some of these destroyed markers um, and strike markers and being able to kick some of their uh, planes either with collateral damage or or down into the flown box to try and reduce the the um, their opportunity to fly air superiority against us. A question of, there's a question as to the timing of that. You know, maybe I should combine that, um, time that um, cruise missile strike um, attempt at the point where I'm ready to attempt air superiority, which I'm not this turn, or you know, at least contest air superiority. So there's a question about how to time that, and I need to give that some thought here in turn three. Um, and otherwise it's looking ghastly for the Indians, um, who are now up to, um, 45 victory points. And the automatic victory level is, um, 35. So they're 10 above the automatic victory level, but they don't, can't get to roll until turn four. So they've got two turns to go before they get to start rolling, but they're way, um, they're way, way, um, their their VP difference is up here at forty nine because the um, the Indians had a minus five from um, from that UN resolution in turn one that cost them five VPs. All in all, um, uh, very one sided at the moment, but still fascinating. Uh, really interesting to watch it unfold. And you know, if the Indians can't claw back into this game, it will. It will demonstrate how much of a roller coaster you can get going when things start going in your favour, and that would be a really interesting thesis for this kind of um, warfare. And if they can claw it back, well, we'll have much more of a game on, um, and that would also be a really interesting um, thesis for this kind of warfare. So, um, either way, uh, it's looking, it's looking, you know really really thought provoking and and um and engaging the other thing i like about this series and i found this with Necros war career is that it's just so it's so usable it really is so usable the the map's lovely the player aids are really nice the tracks are nice the counters the counters are lovely and clear and bright and beautifully printed and 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 everything just looks good and um that really helps when it comes, well, it certainly helps me when it comes to trying to get things played if the actual apparatus of the game, the components and the look of it um, in, excite you about playing it. And this game does. So um, there it is.